San Antonio starts right now. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. Still very humid. Another humid morning here in San Antonio. But the good news is it's Friday. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. It's Friday, June 16th. We finally and thankfully made it to Friday. And it certainly feels like it's, even though it's 81 degrees, it feels much hotter. This <laughs> yes, it does. Really feeling it. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. That's the good news about it. Uh, and we are expecting even warmer temperatures over the weekend. So let's go ahead and check in with Mike to tell us all the good news. I don't know about y'all. Did your microphone fall off, Jonathan? Man. It did. Yeah. Man. There we go. Fix that. Anyway, because I heard this rustling noise, but anyway, walking outside, it felt even hotter this morning. It really did. Numbers are about the same, uh, and the humidity is just still sky high. Of course, yesterday, it was interesting. We stayed only in, I say only, but uh, only in the low to mid 80s up through noon. 84 at noon. Sun came out. We gained 15 degrees throughout the course of the afternoon yesterday, so we topped off at 99. Right now, 81 in town, 83 Castroville, and then again, you factor in these numbers, which remains sky high dew points at 81 in Castroville right now. Yes, it feels like 96 degrees. 96 degrees is what it feels like at 430 in the morning in Castroville. It feels like 88 here in town, 90 pleasant and 91 at uh, Stinson. The heat advisories continue to get extended. This time around, instead of just extending another day, went another couple of days. So in effect, up until 8 o'clock Sunday, excessive heat warnings down to the south. This is coming out of the Corpus Christi Weather Service office. Those are for today, but then there are excessive heat watches posted throughout the rest of the weekend. However you slice it, it is going to be very hot. And yes, it is going to be getting hotter over the weekend. CPS, uh, it's a yellow day as far as conserving energy. If you want more information on that, you can scan the uh, QR code. Just kind of just to save yourself some money as well by uh, turning up the, the thermostat a little bit. 90 at noon, going for 100 today. Yes, it will be getting hotter over the weekend as the ground continues to dry out. It's easier to heat up that drier air, but at least the humidity will it will ease somewhat as we go into the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week. But still, it's going to be brutally hot. Maybe, maybe a little light at the end of the tunnel. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. In our top story this morning, more than 300 storms were reported in the southern U.S., leaving significant damage in more than 100,000 households and businesses without power within the past few days. And one of those areas especially hit is Perryton, Texas, that's receiving aid from counties and cities around the Panhandle City. CNN's John Lawrence has that story. This went from an EF zero to a three in no time. So yes, there was a warning out there, but I don't believe it was the warning that people really thought that they needed to hear. What were once houses in Perryton, Texas are now destroyed with splintered wood and crumbled concrete scattered on the ground. The tornado is just a uh, hundred yards or so right there. The National Weather Service in Amarillo confirmed at least one twister hit the town, leaving residents to pick up the pieces left behind and to stay safe until help arrived. It looked like people were just having to self-rescue themselves. People were, were climbing out of rubble. Um, you know, there was the fire nearby. Um, it was just a, a really, really horrible scene. According to the CFO of Ockle Tree General Hospital, dozens of people have been treated for injuries. While not every part of the downtown is, is destroyed, it is heavily damaged. In an email sent to CNN, Hansford County, Texas Judge Tim Glass said officials are preparing, quote, for a possible mass casualty and or recovery event. If you hear that word warning or if your phone goes off, you cannot treat it like a small issue, a small tornado, because you don't know if it's going to be your neighborhood or not. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And Governor Greg Abbott announced in a statement that he is deploying state emergency response resources to Perryton to meet urgent life safety needs. There are reports of at least three deaths related to the storm. And the battle over property taxes is heating up in Austin. Governor Greg Abbott wants leaders in that house to know that the governor keeps talking about property taxes while vetoing other legislation. Of the 10 bills, Abbott has vetoed so far eight reference property tax relief. The governor won't sign them unless the House 
and Senate agree on what that property tax relief would be. Another 341 bills are still waiting for his signature or a veto, but if he does nothing, they become law. As we get closer and closer to this Sunday, all of these bills that have yet to be signed face the possibility, if not the probability, that they're going to be vetoed. Sunday is the deadline for the governor to sign or veto bills from the regular session, but getting a deal done by then could be tough since the House has just adjourned for the special session. And in Indiana, the murder of two girls. Now, the suspect appeared in court and claimed that he confessed to the killings, not once or twice, but six times. ABC's Andrea Fujii has a story. This morning, the suspect in the murder of two teen girls has allegedly made several confessions. At a court hearing yesterday, prosecutors claimed Richard Allen made admissions of guilt up to six times about his role in the deaths of best friends Abby Williams and Libby German in Delphi, Indiana, back in 2017. These incriminating statements that came out in court today can be used both ways. The state is going to be looking to use them to corroborate a confession, and the defense is going to be using them to support their theory that he is currently having mental health issues and needs treatment. Allen's attorneys acknowledge the statements, but say they're not reliable, blaming them on Allen's mental state in jail. The defense then asked for Allen to be moved to a different facility. Prosecutors allege the 50-year-old was caught on a chilling recording on Libby's phone moments before the girl's deaths. <laughs> The 13- and 14-year-old's bodies were found near a hiking trail. Allen was arrested five years later, connected to the case by a bullet found at the scene. He was charged in October, pleading not guilty. Well, it's hard. How can somebody do that and then just go on living life like nothing happened? I, I don't understand. Probably never will understand that. Prosecutors did not elaborate on the details of Allen's confession. As to whether or not he'll be moved to a different facility, the judge's decision is expected soon. The trial is set for January. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. And Juneteenth celebrations start here in San Antonio today. The holiday will be recognized on Monday. Now, the day celebrates the emancipation of former slaves and has become a day to represent and talk about black history. The official Juneteenth festival kicks off today and wraps up tomorrow at Comanche Park 2. And then on Monday, there will be the Juneteenth annual golf tournament at the club on Santerra. All right, time is 437, temperature 81 degrees. And coming up later this morning on GMA, new details on the American couple found dead in their room at a luxury resort in Mexico. What the paramedics who arrived on the scene are now saying about what happened. That's coming up on GMA beginning at 7. Plus, an updated COVID vaccine is in the works after the break, what it protects against and what it's expected to start rolling out. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide looking over at I-10 East at Loop 410. Saw some flashing lights there earlier. We will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour. And taking a look at outside with live cam 438, folks, 81 degrees. If you're watching us live this morning, don't even go outside just yet, but it will be getting hotter. We'll be checking in with Mike after the break. And welcome back. It's 441. The COVID-19 vaccines are on track for a big recipe change this fall. That's right. The FDA is approving uh, the, uh, the COVID vaccine to include protection against the Omicron strain. Vaccine makers say updated vaccines could be available within months. The CDC says they will make the final recommendations on who should get the updated shot and when older adults and others at high risk continue to have the highest rates of hospitalization, even as cases have declined. And to a new warning from Pfizer, the company says it expects to run out of a certain form of penicillin by the end of the month. Bicillin is a long-acting injectable form of the antibiotic. It's commonly used to treat pneumonia and strep throat. The drug maker says it's working to increase production. This comes among other shortages of several other crucial medications, including Adderall and two chemotherapy drugs. Right, time is 442, 81 degrees. And just ahead, some Olympians are speaking out about the death of their teammate and black maternal health. That's next in your GMA First Look. We go 
In this morning's GMA First Look, the Olympians honoring the memory of their teammate and shining a light on the sobering statistics surrounding black maternal health. Sometimes our strength or the perception that we're strong is a liability for us because then our pain levels aren't believed all the time. Olympian Tiana Madison speaking out after her teammate Tori Bowie unexpectedly died in May while eight months pregnant. Madison also experienced complications in pregnancy, giving birth to her son at just 26 weeks. It is absolutely not our fault, but it is our problem. We need to put ourselves in position to save ourselves, educate ourselves and advocate. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll explain the dangers for black women during pregnancy and hear much more from these Olympians on a mission. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. Hi, it's 4.45, and it's something that we've been talking about lately. Mosquitoes, not only are they annoying, they're just everywhere. Everywhere. And here's ABC's Ginger Z with a closer look. As temperatures warm and we get out to enjoy, there's one thing that no one likes to deal with, and that's mosquitoes. And now, as climate change is pushing temperatures higher, experts are warning that prime mosquito season is getting longer for some places. It also increases the risk of mosquito-borne diseases like West Nile virus. So there are pathogens that we already have here and maybe don't worry about a lot that are likely to be significantly impacted by warming temperatures. The nonprofit research group Climate Central found that 173 cities around the country are seeing more days of prime mosquito weather. The Ohio Valley, Northeast, and some cities in California saw the biggest increase in mosquito days between 1979 and 2022. In the South, where mosquitoes are already out and biting for much of the year, the analysis found that the temperatures could start getting too hot for mosquitoes, which also means those temperatures are getting too warm for humans. That I think the, the mantra for all of us in the coming decades is that don't assume the current conditions are tomorrow's conditions. And mosquitoes are, are definitely the communities, the compositions, and the abundances are going to shift. Experts say as the mosquito population grows, we just need to be more vigilant. Getting rid of standing water in your yard can stop mosquitoes from breeding. And, of course, you can use bug spray or wear protective clothing to prevent bites. With this Climate Minute, I'm Ginger Z. And we've been keeping a close on a close eye on those mosquitoes here in the Alamo City right now on KSAT.com. Some simple ways you can protect yourself, including some things you may not be thinking about. Just head to our website and look for this story. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking over still at I-10 East at Loop 410 where things are a little slow moving even this early Friday morning. Uh, we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cabasos very soon. And even though we haven't had a lot of rain lately, Watch out, you know, little puddles, little bits of water here or there. Uh, you know, that's where mosquitoes like to breed, obviously. So yes. watch all that. Uh, maybe they're too, it's too hot for them to fly too. In this humidity. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> they're they're going into they're hiding as well. Waiting down their little wings because the humidity <laughs> is just sky high out there again this morning. And uh, we've got the heat advisories that have been posted all the way through the weekend. Perhaps a tiny little pin dot okay. of light at the end of the tunnel. Just that's kind of wishful thinking right okay. now. Anyway, <laughs> take a look at this picture and yeah, beautiful shot of some beautiful crops out there. Yeah, the rain came well, hopefully, and obviously here it's dried out enough to get into the fields to get that. But uh, yeah, let's hope uh, the heat doesn't do any damage. We could use a little bit more rain, but uh, yeah, beautiful shot right there. Thank you very much for that picture, Yvonne. All right, we got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Same scenario as the past few mornings. It's very hazy. Uh, it's just that, and the humidity is just, I mean, it, it's like a weight almost when you walk outside. 81 out there at the airport, 82 Stinson, Pleasanton, 83 Castroville. Again, the heat index readings are sky high, upper 80s. Yes, it feels like 96 degrees in Castroville right now. The dew point temperatures remain extremely high, upper 70s, low 80s. They drop down somewhat, but not that much in the afternoon. As a matter of fact, at one point yesterday afternoon, we had a heat index here in town that was approaching about 113, almost 114, because the humidity just stayed so very high. And once that sun did come out yesterday, like I said off the top of the show, we gained 15 degrees from noon 
up until five o'clock in the afternoon. So that's just, I mean, skyrocketing temperatures. And that was despite the fact that we had so much humidity out there, which takes a lot more energy to heat up. Now, as we go into the afternoons, the next couple of days, it looks like humidity may start to trim off just a little bit. It'll come back up in the mornings, but then as the ground dries out, it'll be slightly lower in the afternoons. That in turn, though, allows temperatures to get even hotter. So no matter how you slice it, still going to feel very hot. At least the humidity won't be quite as high as time rolls on over the next couple of days. We are going to be staying at uh, 80 this morning. Yesterday, we tied for the warmest low temperature on record. If we stay at 80 today, that will be a new record for the warmest low temperature for this date. And we'll start to see a little bit of sunshine mixed in that hazy sun. Lots of clouds this morning and and then we're going to be getting up into the uh, 90s and I'm going for 100 today. And yes, we will have those heat index readings uh, approaching 110 or even higher than that over the next few days. Here's what the satellite picture is showing uh, some low clouds hanging around here right now. Kind of hard to see off to the east of us. That's where the severe weather is going to be after hitting the northern portion of the state yesterday and all the way from the middle portion of the country and then back down into the deep south is where the threat for severe weather is. Otherwise, for us, nothing around here, just hot and humid and 100 degree temperatures going into the next few days. So again, as things begin to dry out a little bit, the ground dries out a little bit more. That's going to then allow temperatures to get up into the hundreds. We're going to be peaking Sunday through the first part of the week. At least the humidity eases ever so slightly, but still just brutally hot temperatures around here. Perhaps a Things will ease a bit more as far as temperatures by the end of next week. Some of that's a little wishful thinking. There are some subtle signs, but uh, that's still a week away. Between now and then, lots of water, lots of shade. For sure, but wishful thinking, the 99 looks great right now. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> it's a cold snap almost, but uh, yeah, hopefully the, the pattern would ease ever so slightly. But again, that's a week away. Things can change. All right. Thank you, Mike. Hopefully they change towards the cooler side. Yes. 452, temperature 81 degrees. A new superhero is speeding into theaters this week. We're gonna have a preview next in your morning spotlight news. Let's take a look at the Texas Lottery pick three. The numbers are 961, Fireball 7, Daily 4. Those lucky numbers are 3543, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 1, 9, 10, 19, 32, and your Texas two step. 16, 26, 27, 32, bonus ball three. Four fifty-five and another humid start. Yeah, and, and this is what I was alluding to when I finished up weather as far as the hopefully a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Look at this upper air pattern map and there's that high. That's the thing that is really just sitting on top of us right now. It is it's pushing down in the atmosphere. It's going to continue to kind of strengthen, build on in here as we go into the latter part of the weekend. The first part of next week, that thing is sitting just about right on top of us. And that's why temperatures plus as the ground dries out, temperatures get up into the low hundreds. Now, as we go into the latter part of the week, Right now, it's looking like that thing's just going to start to edge over to the west a little bit more. And so once that kind of scoots over somewhat, it would sort of ease its grip on top of us. Also, we'd get into a little more of a northerly flow, which a lot of times, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had that northwesterly flow. You get those little disturbances coming on in here. That would be the hope as far as seeing something try to uh, pop up around here. So that's what we're looking at as of right now is that thing starting to just kind of shift off there to the west a little bit. So that would ease temperatures somewhat going into the latter part of next week, maybe next weekend. Yeah, any relief we're, would be yeah, awesome at this yeah, point. Yeah, we're talking, I mean, we're talking a couple of degrees, but take 99 over 103. And, mm -hmm. and right now, of course, we've got all the, the humidity to uh, to deal with. As to, of right to greet now. us this Friday morning. <laughs> I tell you, it was, it was, walking outside this morning, it was like, oh my God, yes. it was worse than yesterday. But this time I was a little prepared just because it happened yesterday. <laughs> and so, cause I, I slowly opened the door this morning and I was like, yeah, there it is. No. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Ain't fun. And taking a look at Transguide San Antonio's roadways, you're taking a look at I-10 East Loop at 410 there. Looks like traffic's moving slowly. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cabasos to see how things are playing out this morning. Live from KSAT 12.
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The Massachusetts airman accused of leaking top U.S. secrets online has been indicted and is now facing up to 60 years in prison. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the details from Washington. And good Friday morning. We have the humidity to greet us before the weekend. 81 degrees for now. And Mike's going to tell us what we can expect and over the Father's Day weekend. Good morning, San Antonio. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My name is Jonathan Cotto, and today is Friday, June 16th. We made it to the end of the week. Yes, we did. Thanks for joining us, and thank you for joining us as well. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Uh, if you have plans, I'm sure you're going to try to stay cool as well. And stay hydrated, because yes. it's been brutal out there. Yes, it has. Uh, Father's Day, I mean, I guess hope maybe the movies or the pool. Mike, do you have indoor plans? Yes, <laughs> exactly. But or if you do have outdoor plans earlier on in there, although you still have all this humidity out there, that's going to start to ease ever so slightly, especially in the afternoons. But uh, it's still just going to be ridiculously hot. 82 right now. If we the record for this morning is staying is the warm record or the warm low temperature is 79 degrees. So we are right on track to uh, hit a record earlier this or later on throughout the morning. I should say 100 for a high temperature later on today. That is not a record, but that will be the first uh, triple digit temperature officially here in town. The aquifer, it's been taking big hits every day this week, down another seven tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens, mold and pigweed are both on the low side. Some of the temperatures around the area right now again are just almost insanely hot out there 83 Castroville 82 at the airport yeah, you factor in these numbers dew points remain just ridiculously high 80 at Randolph 81 in Castroville mix it all together what it feels like is 95 in Castroville 90 out there at the airport that's what it feels like when you step outside as of right now. It's basically hot out there, 89 at Stinson. And we do have the heat advisories. They have been extended down not just another day, but two days. So up through 8 o'clock Sunday for all of the area. Excessive heat warnings down in our southern and southeastern counties. That's through today, but then the excessive heat watches are extended through the weekend. So. Basically, it's just going to be brutally hot, so you got to really, really take it easy. Cloudy, hot, and humid this morning. Then partly cloudy skies. Upper, uh, excuse me, that should not say upper 100s. My beg your pardon. 100 and very, very humid later on today. Yesterday we were at 84 at noon with all those clouds out there, and the thinking was, okay, we'll stay on the cooler side. Sun came out, we gained 15 degrees throughout the course of the day. So yeah, it can heat up very quickly, obviously, this time of year. Getting hotter this weekend, then next week, still, it is going to be on the hot side. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. What's going on? Uh, nothing good over here, Mike. Unfortunately, things are getting busy, and it's already, uh, it's only five o'clock in the morning. Let's get a quick look at I-10 East at Loop 410. Now, this is a shot from Trans Guy. John Jonathan spotted this a little bit earlier. Slow moving traffic. We do have an 18 wheeler that was jackknife earlier in the morning, sometime around 1 30. I've been keeping a close eye on that. Spoke to our friends over at Trans Guide. We know that they were in the clearing stages, but it's taken a little while. Right now, traffic right there, as you see it, is exiting Risby, but a portion of Loop 410 going northbound has been shut down so first responders can get that job done. Uh, no word yet on any injuries. Uh, hopefully, everyone's doing okay out there, but the good news is it's early enough to where we're not spotting big slowdowns. This is a spot I'm going to have to watch very closely throughout the morning, but taking a look right there at the map, that jackknife 18 wheeler is not causing a big issue in the northbound lanes of 410, but not the only issue I'm watching very closely here. I have to take a drive this time all the way up to I-10 in Kerrville. A major crash has been reported right here at I-10 westbound at mile marker 508. I've not spotted any cameras in that area. The transcat cameras are really spread out, so I don't know if we're going to be able to get a shot of the conditions out there, but it does look like a poor of I-10 westbound has been shut down and we know if you have plans to head up there maybe in the next few minutes for whatever reason just prepare for that. Let's give you a wide look now back here in the metropolitan area. I'm not spotting any other major issues so that's good but traffic's moving pretty slow along loop 1604 going westbound at just 12 miles per hour. There's a lot of construction going on so we're gonna have to keep a close eye on those spots but our morning is off to a very busy start here in the traffic lab and for those first responders out there working to clear the mess up. We'll watch it closely and hopefully we'll have a better update coming up a little bit later on in the newscast guys thank you steven
Hundreds of homes in Bear County now have handgun locks. That's right. This comes through the Commissioner's Court new gun safety initiatives. Now, Avery Everett tells us how this is just the first step in building up gun safety across San Antonio. James, okay. Hundreds of handouts. Thank you. What part of town do you guys live on? All packed with a purpose. This is about protecting our community. The Bear County Commissioner's Court gave out boxes of handgun safes and locks Thursday, all backed by the Gun Safety for Bear initiative. We're hoping that through this program, people learn more about uh, what it means to be a responsible firearm and gun owner. The county handed out hundreds of gun safes and locks today, but the biggest deterrent to actually using these products can often be the price tag. These range anywhere from $15 to $50. I've never had anybody leave them behind. In every gun safety class taught by Bill Slater over the past three decades. Let's go straight down the, down the chamber. Gun owners have walked away with a lock. And do people take them? Yep, every single one of them. Slater says a lock is just a lock if you don't have the education to back it up. Everybody owns a hammer is not a carpenter. Just because you've got a tool doesn't mean you're going to be successful in using that tool. For a city with more than two million people. Yeah, and the county says 500 handouts can feel like only a few. It's one layer of protection that we can offer. But there's hope that those handouts will soon be used. The county still has four more of these giveaways scheduled for the rest of the summer. But if you haven't already registered, you won't be able to pick up a gun safe or lock. They do say, though, if the rest of these pickups go over smooth, then they'll plan more for the future. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. And at the Capitol, Governor Greg Abbott signing the Save Women's Sports Act. Senate Bill 15 has been deemed controversial across our state. The bill prohibits transgender athletes from competing on college teams that match their gender identity. The governor speaking at the bill signing saying this is needed to protect women in sports. Women's sports, women's records, women's teams, women's dressing rooms, all are jeopardized when men are allowed to compete for those teams. And you can watch the governor's full speech on this bill signing. You can just head over to our website at ksat.com. And in your morning headlines, a major development in the case of the Massachusetts airmen accused of leaking U.S. national secrets online. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, his alleged actions threatened U.S. support of Ukraine's fight against Russia. Federal prosecutors allege 21-year-old Jack Teixeira was risking U.S. national security and the lives of U.S. service members, allies, and others to impress friends online, including on chat groups on the Discord gaming platform. In the six-count grand jury indictment charging Teixeira with willful retention and transmission of classified information, a revelation about the real-time impact of Teixeira's alleged leaking. This was a deliberate criminal act. The indictment explaining that Teixeira's alleged leaks included key details about the U.S. providing military support for Ukraine's fight against Russia, including how that equipment would be transferred and used. Teixeira worked as an IT specialist for the Massachusetts Air National Guard, earning a top secret security clearance in 2021. Today, the Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas Teixeira. Prosecutors say Teixeira was illegally accessing and transmitting top secret information for more than a year before his April arrest at his family's home and that his superiors warned him at least twice to stop accessing information beyond the scope of his primary duties. If convicted, Teixeira faces up to 60 years in prison. Teixeira's attorney and his family declined to comment on his indictment. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. All right, that was Justin Finch. Time is 508, temperature 81 degrees. And still to come on GMSA, Google is going virtual for shopping. How it's letting users try on apparel before you buy. And we've been telling you about the heat after the break. A warning if you're planning to head outside this weekend. Speaking of the heat, let's look outside with a live pen. If you haven't stepped out yet, don't be surprised. It's very humid and 81 degrees out there. We'll be right back.
As we head into the weekend, clinics and emergency room staff are reminding us to take it easy out there in the heat. So far, about 10 people have checked in with heat-related problems at Baptist Health System's emergency departments. About seven showed up in the ER at University Hospital. Doctors say pushing yourself too hard in the heat could lead to a heat stroke, including long-term problems with kidneys, your liver, and even brain damage. If you start to feel sick, doctors say take a break and get into a cool area and most importantly, hydrate. You really should seek emergency care if you or the person who you're with starts having what we call mental status changes where they're acting confused or out of it, not acting themselves. Definitely if they start having any seizure activity, so jerking motions, or if they become unconscious or anything like that, that's when you need to call 911 and get them to the hospital. People who take certain medications, including blood pressure medicine, should be extra cautious. You're more likely to suffer from dehydration. Right now on KSAT.com, you can read more about how a packet of honey and salt could help you feel better after being outside. Yeah, usually on a marathon route, they'll hand you packets of salt like uh, in, into it just to, just to help you get, oh, yeah. get through it. Um, you know, we can't underestimate these temperatures. It is yeah. brutal out there. Yes, and it will be for, for a little bit. That's what Mike's telling us right now. I'm just taking a look now. It's 514 and 81 degrees. And coming up, just a change for Ticketmaster and Live Nation. What you need to know in your morning tech bites. So I didn't think I needed Swiffer until I saw how easily it picked up my hair every time I dried it. It only takes a minute. <laughs> look at that. The heavy duty cloths are extra thick for amazing trap and lock, even for his hair. Wow. And for dust, I love my heavy duty duster. The fluffy fibers trap dust on contact, up high and all around without having to lift a thing. <laughs> I'm so hooked. Swiffer, so wow, so worth it. Trying vapes to quit smoking might feel like progress, but with three times more nicotine than a pack of cigarettes, vapes increase cravings, trapping you in an endless craving loop. Nicorette reduces cravings until they're gone for good. We made a promise to our boy Blue that we would make the healthiest foods possible with the finest natural ingredients and real meat first. And that's our promise to you and your dog or cat. Because when you love them like family, you want to feed them like family. Today's Tech Bytes, Ticketmaster and parent company Live Nation have committed to showing customers the full cost of their tickets up front. Backlash over hidden junk fees reached a boiling point when fans faced unreasonably high prices for Taylor Swift's tour tickets. President Biden pushed for the change. And you won't see any more Microsoft games for the Xbox One. The company says the console's dated hardware can't keep up with modern games. They say they are now focused on the latest generation of the console. Finally, Google has a new artificial intelligence supported feature that allows users to see what a clothing item looks like on different models. By using the new try on feature, you just select an article of clothing and the model which you most resemble. Models range from extra, extra small to 4XL. Those are your tech bites. I'm Rhiannon Alley. Have a great day. Trending right now on KSAD.com, here's a look at what happened when our team went behind the kitchen door. As you can see, the score wasn't too bad, but we did have some issues with the roaches. Health inspectors shut down this business due to a roach infestation. What one of the owners told Tim Gerber about the changes he's made behind the kitchen door, you can find the whole story right now on our homepage. And Bucky's is coming soon to Bernie. The company filed paperwork to start construction there. According to the permits filed with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, construction begins October 1st. It should take about a year to finish. And Case at first reported on the new Bernie Bucky's in August of 2016 when officials announced that the beloved Texas gas station would be opening in the area. Now the weather is heating up in the Alamo City, but luckily, 23 outdoor pools around San Antonio are opening tomorrow. Not soon enough. We need those open today. All pools will be open six days a week, including weekends, and are free to the public. And new this year, pool hours are expanding by one hour each day and offer earlier swim times at select pool locations. For a list of those locations and their hours, just look for this article on our website.
And we're going to talk about how much we need that pole in oh. just a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know yet. how to swim, yeah. so I mean, I'm just happy <laughs> good to, time to learn. Good time to learn. Good time to learn. Yeah, good time to learn, and it's a good time for drivers to be in the know before they have to go because we have some issues out there along Loop 410 northbound. That's the shot we showed you. I've had our we've had our eyes on it for quite a while now. Uh, this was actually reported around 1:30 this morning. A reported 18 wheeler that was jackknifed, and you can see that they've shut down a portion there at, at Loop 410 going northbound. What we're seeing as uh, traffic is actually exiting Rigsby Avenue. So be on the lookout for that. Not a good situation. I'm starting to see a little bit more of the backups out there, so not a good sign. Uh, our map is not picking up any red, though, so that's the good news. But there's no word yet if anyone was actually hurt in this situation. But things aren't looking good on another side of, of over here off of I-10. We do have a pretty serious crash at I-10 westbound at mile marker 508. I talked about this a little bit earlier. There are no trans guide cameras in that area that would be able to show us the conditions, but you could see that things are not looking good out there. Looks like they've actually shut down a portion of of I-10 going westbound. So we'll keep an eye on that and hope for a better update soon. But wide look now back in the metropolitan area. Things are pretty quiet for the most part. There is some construction that has slowed folks down along Loop 1604 going westbound, not too far from Live Oak. So we'll watch that area closely, but this has seemed uh, this seems to be the big issue right now. I know we're going to send our Alyssa Cole out there. She's going to scope the area to see if she can find a safe location to report on what she's seen. But other than that, Mike, our Friday morning is not looking too good. Mm -mm. At all that and you know, on top of that, all of that humidity out there as well. All right, here is a beautiful, beautiful picture of the, the bee balm. Great looking flower. I love that color on there and it's just fantastic. Going to have to start doing a little bit of watering if you have not already done that since obviously we haven't had any rain and then we still have enough moisture in the ground that's adding to all of this humidity out there. But as the ground continues to dry out, then that's going to allow temperatures to heat up that much more easily in the afternoon. Obviously, despite the, the fact that we had so much humidity yesterday, we did get up to 99 degrees in the afternoon. And now heat index at the moment, 94 Castroville, 90 here in town. The normal high temperature this time of year is 93. So we're almost close to the normal high as of right now. It feels like 88 in Pleasanton. Like I said, it was 99 yesterday. We were still at 84 at noon with all the clouds out there and and the thinking being, wow, we'll stay on the the lower side or the cooler side, if you will. But boy, as soon as that sun came out, we gained 15 degrees throughout the course of the day. So this was yesterday, a handful of triple digits out there, especially over toward the Rio Grande. There are going to be a lot more today, and uh, we're going to be 100 here in town. Even a few upper 90s, Lake Hills forecast 102, same thing in Castroville later on today. So we stay in the 80s, and if we don't hit 79 this morning, if we don't drop down to 79, we will set a new record for the warmest low temperature on this date. We tied it yesterday. We're going to be up to 90 again at noon and we'll start to get that humidity factoring in there. So the heat index is going to feel like 110 higher than that. Just really dangerously high heat index readings later on this afternoon, pretty much all around the area, especially down to the south and down to the southeast. It's going to feel like 117 Beville, 118 in Victoria. And that's why those heat advisories and excessive heat warnings are posted, especially down to our south and to our southeast. Been talking about that high. That's the thing that's sitting on top of us right now. That's the thing that is making it so just brutally hot around here as the the like I said, as the ground continues to dry out, that's going to allow temperatures to heat up that much more easily in the afternoon. So that's why we're going to be getting up into the low hundreds starting really tomorrow and then going into Sunday and the first part of next week is that, that high just keeps a lid on top of us and prevents anything as far as any rain from developing around here. So we go through the middle part of the week, same scenario, then there is some hope and some thinking with this computer model that the high is going to start to drift a little bit further off to the west. So it won't just be pushing right down on top of us. The grip kind of eases ever so slightly. And we'll also have a bit around this clockwise rotation, a bit of a northerly uh, airflow around here, which you can get little disturbances to move on through. And then the hope being maybe a chance of rain. Again, a lot of this is is. Fingers crossed, hoping, rabbit's foot, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that would be the little bit of relief potentially by the end of next week. Until then, it's just going to stay very, very hot. Today, we're going to have the brutally high uh, heat index readings. The humidity will still stay very high throughout the day. At least the humidity is going to ease ever so slightly in the afternoons. 
say going in, especially towards Sunday, first part of next week. But you'll have the hotter temperatures then too. So okay, but at least that'll ease off for Father's Day. Yeah, I mean I'm talking Tiny. little bits <laughs> here and there. Yeah, well, we'll take it, Mike. Oh yeah. Thank and you. the good news is swimming pools open tomorrow. That's true. San Antonio time is 5:24. Temperature 81 degrees. And a good news if you're heading to the movies this weekend. Earlier we told you about the flash hitting theaters, but there are several other big flicks out there to tell you about after the break. A flurry of Friday film news. Harrison Ford and Phoebe Waller-Bridge go for a dip in the first clip from Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The aging archaeologist and his goddaughter follow the clues and go for a ride on a water slide. The film opens June 30th. You knew this would happen? Everything changed. Avatar star Zoe Saldana has her eye on the calendar. Disney recently pushed back Avatar 3 to 2025 and Avatars 4 and 5 to 2029 and 2031 respectively, prompting Saldana to note on Instagram, great, I'm gonna be 53 when the last Avatar comes out. I was 27 when I shot the very first Avatar. A new take on The Three Musketeers is coming to U.S. theaters. Yeah. Samuel Goldwyn Company has acquired U.S. rights to a two-part adaptation Williams. featuring an ensemble of European stars, including Eva Green as Milady de Winter. No, 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 the Three Musketeers D'Artagnan is due in U.S. theaters later this year, and The Three Musketeers Milady in 2024. Buckling my swash in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Let's look out there with live cam. We're starting Friday, 81 degrees, and it's going to be very humid again. That's just a warning when you open that door. And Mike's going to tell us when that humidity might sneak off a little bit, but there's a payoff. <laughs> Good Don't get your hopes up, like, for having dry air out there. <laughs> <laughs> put it, we'll put it that way. So Hey, every little bit helps, we, and we're going to promote it here, right? Oh, right. Steph. But even walking outside this morning, it just felt even Gross. hotter did. than yesterday. So, yeah, it is hot and humid. We have heat index readings right now that are closer to what the actual normal average high temperature is this time of year. So it is a steam bath out there. It is swampy. It's a rainforest, however you want to describe it, a big old wet towel sitting on top of us. A lot of clouds hanging around. So the same start basically the past couple of days, 82 degrees. The normal low temperature is 73, so we're almost 10 above normal. We are on the verge. If we don't get down to 79, we're going to be setting a record for the highest minimum temperature and the dew point. That's also one of those numbers that is just outrageously high up to 70. Dew points did stay in the mid 70s even yesterday afternoon. So at one point we had heat index readings here in town right around 113, 114. It's still 83 in Castroville, 80 Divine, and 80, like I said, 82 out there at the airport. And of course, these very high heat index, re excuse me, dew point temperatures. 81 is what it, uh, the dew point is there at Randolph. So it feels like 89 degrees. 94 is the heat index in Castroville, 90 out there at the airport. So yeah, it's basically hot when you step outside and it's 530 in the morning. Mold and pigweed are both on the low side. The update account will come out later on this morning. Heat advisories have been extended once again, this time up through Sunday. So now through the rest of the weekend and then excessive heat warnings in our southern and southeastern counties. Those are in effect today, but then the excessive heat at, at uh, watches, pardon me, in effect through the weekend. So it's going to remain just brutally hot now through the foreseeable future. Temperatures are going to stay in the 80s this morning. So yeah, good bet that we are going to be setting the, the record for the warmest minimum temperature. Make it up to 90 today at noon and then some more sunshine out there. And once that sun comes out, temperatures are really going to be skyrocketing. I'm going for 100 for a high later on today. But again, it's going to feel 10, 12, 13 degrees higher than that. 
little bit of an ease in the uh, humidity. That's the best way to, to describe it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Yeah, Mike, things are not looking good on, on our roadways this early in the morning. I do want to take our eyes off the big problem at 410 at I-10 uh, East, where we do have that jackknife 18-wheeler. Let's get a look and show you how busy the commute right now is at 35 there at 37 at Jones Avenue. We're seeing a lot more folks that are traveling this early in the morning, so it's definitely not going to help in the congestion with the congestion that we see whenever an incident pops up. Check out 410 at McCullough. Typically around this time, we don't see that many folks out there, so we are off to a very busy start, and our roadways are not looking great. Remember, we do have that jackknife 18-wheeler that was reported right there at 410 northbound at East Houston. Earlier, there was a little bit of a slowdown picked up, but remember, a portion has been shut down due to uh, first responders being on the scene working to clear it all up. There's still no word yet if anyone was seriously hurt. Uh, hopefully, everyone's doing okay, but right now, traffic is being forced to exit Rigsby, so be on the lookout for that if your travel's taking through that area. But guess what? Not too far from there, a new crash popped up. I-10 eastbound at WW White Road. This is reported by TxDOT. I'm going to go through some of the cameras in that area. I've not spotted any slowdowns, but I am seeing a little bit of yellow that's picked up out there on along I-10. Pardon me. Uh, nothing major just yet, but we'll keep a close eye on that. Another big area that we're watching as well over here of I-10 in Kerrville, westbound lanes, F mile marker 508, another crash reported. This one causing some pretty big slowdowns for drivers. You can see a portion of the highway has disappeared from our map, which is a good indication that the road right there has been shut down. So our morning is off to a pretty troublesome start here on the roadways, but we're going to watch it closely. We're going to get you through some of these areas, but as we get you back here on TransGuide, things are off to a busy start in other areas as well. So we're we have our drivers that are out there this early in the morning. Just remember to drive safe anytime you see those flashing lights out there on the highway. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is facing a staffing shortage. That's right. The medical examiner not only helps in identifying these cases here in Bear County, but other small counties use them as well, and the work isn't slowing down. Camelia Juarez tells us what Bear County commissioners are doing to help. And with a rising population, we also have more deaths than before, just natural deaths. Tom Pina with the county commissioner's office spoke on behalf of the medical examiner's office because the entire team is busy working on autopsies. Right now it's a tense situation and the office is really doing their best that they can. There are eight medical examiner positions and only half are filled. Now administrators are having to take time from their work to fill in the gap. Pina says hiring new medical examiners is challenging when only 40 board certified medical examiners graduate from their fellowship every year across the U.S. Candidates need a medical doctorate and board certification. Everybody is rushing up to them and wants to hire them. So basically, they can pick and choose wherever they want to go. A Bear County medical examiner could earn up to $300,000 a year compared to Tarrant County, which pays up to $375,000. Commissioners recently approved a stipend for examiners' extra workload, but the work can be emotionally taxing. We all know that the office of the medical examiner has been through a lot, um, and that is simply because we had two mass casualty events in quick succession. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. And getting through security at the airport can be challenging, but did you know that the Transportation Security Administration helps people who need extra assistance? It's part of a program called TSA Cares. The free service is available for passengers with disabilities, medical needs, or other special circumstances. You register with TSA 72 hours prior to your flight and we have an officer who will actually meet the traveler and their family at the curb and basically we provide a more private screening and allow the person to have a less stressful experience. And Patricia Mancha with TSA says using TSA cares will not make things go quicker. In fact, it could actually make the process a little longer. So give yourself extra time. And TSA Cares is available at all U.S. airports for any flight. But you must pre-register at least 72 hours before your trip. You can do that online at TSA.gov or by calling TSA's passenger support line. That number on your screen, 855-787-2227. All right, time is 538, temperature 81 degrees. And coming up on GMSA, Robin Roberts is taking you live to Berlin, Germany to celebrate the incredible athletes of the Special Olympics World Games.
I'm going to be 70 years old, but I'm going to give it my all, whether I win the match or whether I lose. I've already won with the opportunity to be able to play. What is it about this team that you enjoy so much? Well, we always work hard for ultimate goal, which is win gold medals. The story ahead on Good Morning America coming up at 7. And taking a look outside with live cam. It's 539, folks, and it's already 81 degrees. If you haven't had a chance to step outside, don't rush. It is going to get hot. And we're going to be checking in with Mike to learn more on the weather. Welcome back. It's 542. Well, Metro Health and the YMCA are celebrating National Men's Health Week. So tomorrow, June 17th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., the YMCA is hosting a men's basketball tournament at their location on Walsham Road and Mid-Crown Drive. So right, that's next to the Ed White Middle School. So this event will feature vendors, giveaways, and a cooking demonstration also at the event. There will be a health fair to educate men on why it's important to take care of their bodies through healthy eating and exercise. And the San Antonio Pets Alive is hosting an adoption event tomorrow from noon to 4 p.m. That will be at Petco's Ingram location off Northwest Loop 410. Pets adopted during the event will have a reduced adoption fee of $25. The event aims to bring together animal lovers in the community and provide them with an opportunity to meet their next furry family member. And the time right now, 543 and a very humid 80 degrees out there. That's right. And important news, if you're heading on vacation soon and staying in a hotel, just ahead we're pulling back the blankets and the sheets, what you need to know. And welcome back, it's 547. And when you're planning your summer vacation, do you ever wonder how clean your hotel room will be? I always wonder that for sure. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris went behind the scenes with the triple inspector to see what they check out before you check in. Needs to have a deadbolt lock for security that comes out a full inch. We'll call him Inspector 66. After all, his hotel checks for AAA are anonymous. He's not only inspecting for security, like lights and peepholes. All beds have to have a mattress protector, which is this right here. Like a nosy guest. It's not sticky. He's seeing how well a room is cleaned. No bugs, no dust, no cobwebs. We look at the shower curtain, no dark spots, no spots. No mildew. Since the pandemic, hotels have made changes. So have inspectors. He uses this machine now to swab for surfaces people touch a lot and test for enzymes that can signal bacteria. This is something that the guests are going to be touching often. Who doesn't touch the thermostat? Shake it. In five seconds, let's see what we get. Green for good, red for not so good. Superb. And one thing he says most likely to carry germs is this, the TV remote control. But take a look, since COVID, things are changing. This one has a smooth surface, easier to clean. His findings help him give a AAA rating. This Best Western earns a three diamond status. You can look up thousands of hotels nationwide on the AAA app. But he also told me three things you can check to feel good the room was cleaned. Look at the bathroom mirror for water spots. Look across the room to see if objects are straightened and finally use your nose. I always pause at the door and take in a deep breath. If it smells fresh, he says that's a good sign. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. And today is a national fudge day. Yay! So some of the most familiar fudge flavors are chocolate, chocolate nut, peanut butter, maple, and maple nut. The confectionery appears to have made its debut in the late 19th century when some businesses in Michigan started to sell fudge-like items to tourists. Now, some of those original shops on that island are still around and still making fudge. Well, this video just looks wonderful. Absolutely delicious. Peanut butter, my all-time favorite. Oh, really? I love I'll it. I'll just take the plain chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's time to take a look at what the roadways around San Antonio are looking like right now. Stephen Cavazos 
Busy, busy start, guys. Uh, 10 East at Loop 410. I know we've been talking about this for a little while, but this has been lingering around and it's just gotten worse. Take a look right behind me. We have flashing lights out there and we also have plenty of uh, tail lights, which shows that we're seeing a major slowdown. Remember, this is the area where we had that 18 wheeler that was jackknife earlier in the morning, sometime before 1 30. Alyssa Cole is making her way to the scene, so we're hoping to get some information from her on the ground. But from what we're seeing at this trans guide camera, it's just not looking good at all. A portion of Loop 410 going northbound has been shut down. Traffic exiting Rigsby Avenue. So I think folks are trying to figure out their way around this. Maybe uh, why is to start looking for an alternative route because I'm not seeing any progress there. Now in the northbound lanes, there's not been a big buildup, at least just yet, but we're going to watch that area closely and not too far from there. There was another crash reported by TxDOT here at I-10 eastbound at WW White. I didn't see any flashing lights out from the, some of the trans guide cameras that are in the area, but uh, regardless, just make sure that you drive safe. And of course, uh, the other big issue is going to take us out over here to Kerrville, where we have a major crash along I-10 westbound at F mile marker 508. That had shut down a portion of the highway, but it looks like a little bit of it may have reopened. Now let's give you a wide look back here in the metropolitan area. Things seem to be moving OK. We're not spotting a lot of other issues out there. But regardless, I think uh, Mike had mentioned this before. Anytime an incident pops up, you really start to see how many people travel through the San Antonio roadways. So uh, we're going to watch things closely, but we are off to a very busy start out there at 281 at Jones Maltzberger and 64 at Marbox. Not too bad. You're in the good there in US 90 East and Westbound. We have a lot of folks that are traveling this morning, guys. We're going to watch things closely, but let's hope we'll see a better update there at that uh, 18 wheeler situation. Oh, well, we hope so. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about this picture you're going to show because I missed it. So on Wednesday morning, like about 10 ish, uh, I had a meeting, so I couldn't make it out there. But mm -hmm. because I hadn't seen this, I don't know why it's so interesting to me. The, the goats at Brackenridge Park. <laughs> yeah, I mean, instead of a lawnmower, why not some goats? And didn't they release 160? Oh, wow. Yeah. So they were just eating the goats. grass? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 natural, the natural way to, you know, take care of them. Wow, it's like a buffet for them. Yard work. Yeah. Yeah. A goat in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a bad idea. Right? right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> Maybe we can, Especially with the, you can avoid have the them on loan. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Where's the where's the shade for these little guys? Well, I'm sure. Well, there's a lot there at Brackenridge. Yeah. I, I, I can say that. Oh, so. I hope they had a good meal. I wonder if they're, did, was that just a one day thing? Yeah, or? yeah, apparently. So I, I missed it last year. Yeah. And then this year oh, I heard about it. Yeah. I thought it was interesting because I, I was like, well, that'd be a cool thing to, you know, to take my little girl to see. But, you know, I was in a meeting and maybe next year goats. We'll have a, <laughs> we'll have a date next year. <laughs> Well, Fidel, thank you very much for yeah, the picture. Thanks for the pick. Great one. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. It is, I mean, it's hot out there this morning. There's no other way to put it. And the humidity is just ridiculous once again. And the heat index, what it feels like is 90 here in town, 94 Castroville. And just to put it in perspective, the normal high temperature is 93 degrees this time of year. Yeah, so we're that's what it feels like is close to the normal high temperature. The humidity, of course, remains just extremely high. Temperatures are not going to we're at 82 right now, and I don't see any reason why we're going to be dropping down all that much, maybe down to 80, which would then be a new record for the warmest low temperature, the highest minimum temperature for this date. We're going to see a little bit of sunshine. It's going to be tough to get the sunshine coming on through, kind of like yesterday morning. Then we'll see a bit more later on in the afternoon. Yesterday, we did squeeze out 99. We went from 84 at noon up to 99 in the afternoon and going for 100 today. And of course, with that humidity, which is still going to be there, that's going to put the heat index readings well above about uh, 110 or so, and then much, much higher down to the south and to the southeast. Catula forecast heat index 116, 118 there in Victoria. And that's why we've got the heat advisories. By the way, this has been extended all the way through Sunday evening now, and then excessive heat warnings down in our south and southeastern counties and then excessive heat watches for the rest of the weekend. So yeah, it's just going to remain brutally hot all weekend long. This is I, I feel kind of bad showing this just because it's 39 right now in International Falls. It's 43 at Cutbank, so basically 40 degrees 
colder up there to the north of us and none of that's coming around here in any way, shape or form. So we are some of the hottest temperatures right now, along with the desert off to the west and along with Miami as time rolls on. And we've been talking about this, how, you know, all the moisture that we've had recently in the rain that we've had this spring has kind of helped out as far as keeping temperatures down somewhat. But then as things dry out, it's going to be much easier to get well up into the hundreds, which is going to be the case Sunday into the first part of next week. Perhaps just a little glimmer of hope by the end of next week. We'll be back. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, another day of severe storms, this time with tornadoes right on the state line of Texas and Oklahoma. Maria is out there for us with the damage, but I've got to tell you why we are seeing this persistent pattern. We'll get into that and what we can expect for the weekend, including serious heat indices in parts of Texas up over 120 degrees. Also, Robin is live in Berlin for the Special Olympics World Games, sharing stories of those incredible athletes who are going to be competing, and she's going to take us on a bike tour around the city. You don't want to miss that and so much more right here on GMA.